you've come to the right place. If you're a course creator looking to build more impact, income, and freedom, LMS Cast is the number one podcast for course creators just like you. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of the most powerful tool for building, selling, and protecting engaging online courses called Lifter LMS. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name's Chris Badgett and I'm joined by a special guest, Tina Todorovic. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Can you say it for me? <laughs> Todorovic. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Tina is from Social Web Suite, which is a social media management tool. And I'm super excited to get into a bunch of issues around social media and automation that course creators and membership site builders face. Over at Lifter LMS, we use Social Web Suite. Um, we're just scratching the surface of what's capable with it, but I have plans to expand and, and just use it more for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but first, Tina, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope I will be able to help a lot of your content creators so we know if they have all the questions for social media. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. Uh, jump jump right into the questions <laughs> awesome well one of the big issues that course creators face i call it it's like the main issue actually is i call it the five hats problem where they have to be five oops, five different people at once yeah and that's a um expert a teacher um a community builder a technologist and an entrepreneur i might put the social media stuff kind of sits under um the marketing piece, which is under entrepreneur, but it also sits under the community building piece. Yes. Um, so if for the uninitiated, like what is like social media management? Like who is your software the most for? Like what problem does it solve? What is this, what is this thing we should do around social media? Okay. So uh, we build our software for basically to help, uh, all the entrepreneurs out there, as well as social media managers. Uh, there are, uh, well, we are all, we, we have to be more active on social media, right? So people can see our uh, company and our branding. Uh, we want to interact with our users and customers via social media as well. Uh, especially now during the Black Friday sales or Christmas sales or New Year's, that's like the biggest sales of the year. Uh, so you want to get out there like, um, as, and I always tell people like the blog posting is awesome, but, and it's really good to have like the content fresh, but if you don't like put it out there to a lot of people, then basically, unfortunately it goes to waste. Like nobody can see it. And I read somewhere, uh, somebody was like, not that nice explaining that, like only your mother is going to see it. <laughs> but that's like pretty much the gist of it, right? Uh, so yes, it's awesome if you share it on your personal wall, like on Facebook, but like that's your friends and they're going to see it and they're going to maybe like it, but that's not your customers. Like those are the people that are your friends, right? So you want to put it out there with your customers. You want to share it on your Facebook uh, page on your in your groups uh on your twitter or linkedin and uh, instagram and other social networks out there so uh, what we try to do is like uh, we try to um help anyone that want to share and promote and schedule those social messages right so basically uh, we have because we are coming from the wordpress world we have the best integration with wordpress uh, and that was our main uh, goal, to have the best WordPress integrations and then afterwards uh, to, ha to help other people as well not using WordPress. Um, the uh, number one also thing, uh, and that will be even more, uh, we, we just came from the conference, uh, the digital marketing conference from in New York where a lot of big names were there um, and uh, they were uh, they were all saying that the number one hit like for the next year will be Instagram and video. Video is like seeing the expansion right now and the next year will be even more. So basically my advice to all your listeners is if you are not using like videos like Vimeo or YouTube, you should get right to it <laughs> immediately, right? And share it. Um, 
So uh, that's the other thing that we have, like the integration with YouTube. And uh, I found it uh, from our users' feedback that a lot of people are really happy with it. They don't have to go now to YouTube and like copy and paste to like Facebook or Twitter or whatever uh, their videos. They can schedule it with, the, with our social media platform. So that's the one thing as well. The uh, messages, we have the templates for WordPress now within a WordPress uh, plugin. We are building templates for everybody else as well that will be in a quick sandbox. So that means that uh, like you don't have to have like one message. You can have the variations of different messages pulling out from the URL and those types of things. So you can schedule it whenever you want. Uh, what I found out as well is like, um, People like to call it, whenever I ask people, okay, why are you using us? Like, what's like the, one, the number one thing that we are solving your problems and those types of things? Usually it's like set it and forget it. <laughs> people like to set up everything and they just like go to their blogging and every, they know that everything in the back end is like, uh, you know, good. Everything is sharing. They don't need to take care of it anymore. That's for the uh, maybe content creators and bloggers and uh, small business owners. For the social media managers, they like to be hands-on. So although they are scheduling their stuff, they are scheduling it, they don't like set it and forget it approach. They like to schedule it for maybe um, uh, every week for the next week or maybe once or twice a month because they want to have like a different messages uh, all the time and those types of things. So they like those variations more and they are using that things more. I hope that I answered yeah, yeah. your question. Good topic. I gave you, I gave you <laughs> yes. a big question to kind of start with. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to riff on, on that a little bit, just to tell you, the listener, how I got to Social Web Suite, which okay. you can see at socialwebsuite.com. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a busy entrepreneur, business owner, I'm not a social media manager. I do do social media. Um, and I've heard that you kind of, depending upon who you talk to, there's like two strategies. One is be everywhere. And the other is just do one platform really well. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't really like, I think both are, I think it's better to just co combine those two ideas yeah. together and be really good at something. Like, so for me, I spend most of my time directly investing in a Facebook group for, or um, YouTube doing lots of video. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a little bit of Twitter as well, but, um, but that doesn't mean like I've noticed, like I'm just barely do some Instagram and yeah. there's like a whole, I can just tell, like I have a different audience on Instagram, a yes. different audience on Facebook, a different audience on the page versus the group, my personal Twitter profile, my business Twitter profile, my LinkedIn, yeah. uh, my Slack group, they're all very different. And that's what I love about Social Web Suite is what I used to do is I was using a tool called Meet Edgar and they had like a content repurposing thing where it would kind of recycle your blog posts and podcast episodes in my case. And then I think Twitter or somebody kind of said, you can't do that anymore. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. No harm, no foul. I wasn't trying to spam anybody. It's just I've yeah. made like hundreds and hundreds of audio posts and podcasts and blog posts that wanted to recycle, but that's cool. I can deal with that going away. So then that was around the time that I met you and we started using social web suite. So when we do a podcast episode, instead of putting something into like a content recycle until infinity thing, we write like five unique, somebody on my team writes like five yeah. unique tweets that go out like later. And then we post stuff over here. I have some stuff set up that Okay, as soon as I publish a blog post, I know it's going to my group automatically. I don't have to yeah. worry about that. There's still a lot I can optimize, yeah. but I see it as a great tool for just helping me like focus on what I do, like a lot of manual yeah. stuff on Facebook, but I can also like spread it out to LinkedIn and all these other places that I don't go to on a regular basis. That's, that's my story with it. So do you have any comments on any of that? Yes, that's so true. Uh, well, uh, the, the thing that you said about the uh, be everywhere or versus be on like, you know, uh, choose one social media uh, platform and like do it well. I, I have a similar, well, it, it just really depends of who are your customers and where are your customers. That's like the main goal, right? We always, we all, all want to go, well, the first thing is with social media, you want to get your uh, brand out. So you want to have more people know about you. 
they not necessarily will become your customers at the big immediately, right? Because they first want to learn more about you, who are you, sorry, and those types of things. And that's why the content uh, is a really big thing about it. And, uh, and that's why you can also use our tool. And then once when you gain their trust, then they will become your customers, right? So basically uh, my advice is try to figure it out, like try one and then the second and then the third, and then figure it out what works for you the best. Because not every social platform or network works for everybody. So it just really depends who are your customers and where are they. If they are like between, I don't know, 15 and 35, they are most likely on Instagram. Like that's pretty much it. Like older than that, they are uh, on Facebook. So it just depends like uh, what is your tool doing? Uh, you know, for example, if there is like some gaming app or um, something that might like uh, fashion, uh, those types of things are more like probably you're going to find your customers at Instagram more like beauty tips, like, you know, makeups, those types of things probably you're going to find more customers on Instagram, right? How would you describe Twitter, the Twitter audience? Like what Twitter is, is like really, oh, Twitter is like the trickiest of all, to be honest okay. with you. That's like really, really hard to explain. Um, I found it, I found out that there are like a lot of people there as well. And I don't think, I, I also think that usually it's like older audience. So it's not like 15 to like 35, maybe like maybe from 30 plus and uh most of them are just like trying to talk to somebody else not sure if they are just trying to buy something from you they are trying to talk to you and i think on twitter you have to do like your brand awareness so twitter is more for brand awareness than actually trying to uh, gain some uh, customers uh, that's my perception. I'm not sure if that's like correct, right? <laughs> Everybody has their own opinion about it. But that's what I found out with us using the Twitter and with, um, for example, uh, our users as well. Um, we, 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 our users, uh, well, mainly using Facebook, of course, Facebook pages and groups and Twitter. Those are the, the two main tools. Uh, LinkedIn is not that much used, unfortunately, although LinkedIn is really, really great tool for serious, well, uh, all CEOs, VPs, um, and people that make decisions in any company are on LinkedIn. So pretty much if you have some, any kind of business tools, you, you, yeah, like you have to be on LinkedIn, like otherwise, yeah, it doesn't really make any sense to not be on LinkedIn. Right. So that's something that you do, uh, as you said, Facebook groups. Well, um, recently in a past few months, I also, uh, uh, cause I'm subscribed to every single blog post out there, right. <laughs> From all the social media influencers and whatever. So I'm like always following up the latest trends you have to. And a lot of them are talking about Facebook groups. So that's like pretty much, if you don't have a group for your uh, brand, you should do it right now. That's pretty much it. I know that you guys have an awesome group and like a lot of people are um, really uh, active there. Not you, but just like the other members as well, yeah, which is yeah. awesome. I think that's the, the beauty of it. I call and, that uh, four years to overnight success. So our group is over 4,000 people. At the, at the beginning, it was just me talking yeah. and then yeah. like sharing links to blog yeah. posts. And then yeah. magically, it started taking on a life of its own. But it's yeah. been a lot of hard work. It, yes, yes. For the group, you have to put a lot of work. But at the end, I think it's really worth it. Meaning that people... Um, that's what we, we found out. Like, you know how they, everybody, everybody keeps saying, well, why people want to buy from you? Cause they, they like you, trust you, those types of things. Right. So how do you gain their likes and trust? If they, like nowadays in internet, you don't know anybody, like you cannot really go to anybody and like, hi, I'm uh, Chris. Nice to meet you and whatever. Yeah. We go to the conferences, but there are like so many other people out there that you cannot really go to. So that's pretty much the Facebook groups are for that's where you gain their trust and likes. Um, you share like some uh, uh, good content for them, like something that they might be interested. They ask you questions, like support questions sometimes. They ask you questions that are not completely not related. Like I have like a lot of people asking questions that are completely not related to like social web suite. Like for example, which hosting company should I use and those types of things, like nothing like, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. I always reply to any questions. I am not like, oh yeah, that's not my expertise or whatever. I always reply, especially because you know that we are hanging out like to, uh, we always go to like a bunch of conferences and we know a lot of people out there. So I always can recommend like uh, hosting companies that we are working with. Sometimes uh, that, that works out, sometimes not. As well as if somebody asked me for the uh, uh, course creator plugin I'm gonna recommend you guys so that's I mean that's pretty much it it doesn't have to be like closely connected to you but then that way you gain trust with your uh, users and potential customers that's awesome and once when you gain their trust they're gonna be your customers for life that's pretty much it and that's the goal of everybody right yeah so that's, that's a great point and I want to ask you a question just about Facebook specifically for someone who's uh, who's not as initiated in the world of social media or internet marketing. What is the difference between the profile, the page and the group? I know you, you, um, with social web suite, you can, you can go to all those separately, but how do you, like if somebody off the street, like I'm always amazed mm -hmm. when I'm like, meet somebody like, Oh, you don't know what WordPress is or what, whatever. Yeah. Like it's, but it's actually a lot of people just, I just, if you run in the same circles, you, you, you get kind of close to the technology use, which may be new to some other people. So I just wanted to ask, how do you explain the difference between the profile, the page and the group and Facebook? Okay, so Facebook is, uh, because of this latest uh, problems that they had with the uh, data security breach. So they changed a lot of things in the past, well, this year. This year, so like a lot of things uh, have changed. Uh, for example, they are not allowing third-party tools to post to the uh, to the personal profile anymore, unfortunately. Okay. So that's why we don't we cannot really post anymore from social web suite. Uh, basically, what they wanted you to to have, like um, if uh, your personal wall and your personal profile is just for your friends. And that's pretty yeah. much it. So you post stuff there, uh, engage with your friends, ha uh, say happy birthday, share like, you pictures. know, happy anniversary, yeah. share pictures and those yeah. types of things. If you have a business, open up a business page. Yeah. If you want to, and that's, that's their goal. So if you have a business and you want to um, uh, raise awareness about your brand and your business and you want to interact with your customers, open up a page. Basically, that's, that's where you, will, you should post a lot of things about your business. Group is more engaging and more interactive. Uh, page can also be engaging, but not as much. Uh, when you share content, people just say, okay, I like this or I don't like this, and that's pretty much it. There is not that many, uh, typically, there is not that many questions underneath. In a group, people are more relaxed, I think, more engaging. Uh, environment especially if one person start talking about something and then everybody jumps into a conversation so it's more like conversational uh, group is also good uh, great actually if you are especially if you're just starting out uh, uh, simply because you will gain a lot of feedback from your users there and we all want feedback because that's the way we're gonna grow right and um, improve our products and services so that's the way, and that's, that's something that I recommend to everybody. Like you should immediately jump to the groups and because yes, you will gain a lot of trust. Uh, people will know you better, like you and other uh, co-owners and those types of things. So because that's how they, they became customers. Uh, other people is gonna share their experience using your platform. And this is also really, really important because what I found out, although we like develop the platform, right? And we have like sort of idea how you should be using it and what you can do and those types of things. There is, there is always a lot of other things that we didn't really uh, think of and that people are using it for. Like and what? For example, Bob, Bob, uh, Bob Dan, Bob W, uh, P, Bob he's is. always using like, you wouldn't believe, like <laughs> when he said, oh yeah, I'm using like this, 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 this. And like, he sent me a message and I'm like, oh my goodness, I really didn't think that you can actually do that or you can do this and those types of things. Like what he does, like, and he's, um, he's the one that always try to do a different things to see what works, right? And that, so basically he, uh, he uses like um, immediately when his post is, obviously published, then it's shared to like all his uh, social networks, right? Uh, but it's not like that as well as recycling. So he uses that. He uses recycling the post because he says like 
a huge amount of posts, like several thousands. So basically that, as well as he's updating those posts uh, periodically. So it's not really an old, old content. It's all still relevant. Uh, plus he uses the WordPress uh, templates that we have, like the custom messages, as well as on top of that, he also sends like you, uh, the, uh, several messages for each blog post, like a different link. So like he uses everything that like it's possible out there <laughs> and, um, and that works well for him. Yeah. He likes that approach to have like different stuff everywhere, as well as, um, as we said, like um, on Twitter, because there is so much going on, you have to share like at least four times daily, even more. On Facebook, you don't have to share like that much uh, content on uh, a profile or group on LinkedIn as well. So it's like a different things, uh, right? Uh, so basically, uh, that's why he uses like all those things combined. For example, when we developed, I thought, okay, so you have the uh, custom messages in WordPress, you have the own publish or update or whatever scheduled in WordPress uh, things, you have recycling, and that's all set up immediately, right? You don't have to do and go and manually uh, type different messages because you already have everything set up, right? unless you are not using WordPress. No, Bob is using WordPress and then he wants to use everything else as well as he, for example, writes for other blogs. Yeah. Like for GoDaddy Garage, for example, and for other blog posts. And he uh, shared that uh, blog post via our RSS feed integration. So he scheduled them like that. So Can you, like, uh, just for somebody... <laughs> <laughs> who's new to blogging, explain uh -huh. the RSS, what, what it is and what your RSS integration does. Okay, so basically the, oh, <laughs> that's a tricky question. So the RSS feed, so uh, you can share each blog post with RSS feed. So uh, pretty much if you go with the WordPress, for example, or any other blog post, if you type the URL of the blog post and then uh, of the, website and then slash um, RSS mm -hmm. or slash feed sorry yeah. slash feed you can uh, you can immediately pull up the feed of that uh, site so it's like a it's, it's just like a ongoing like this is the feed this is what's happened in the order that it happened pretty much yes uh, you have the you have to set up stuff like for example in WordPress it's uh, I believe the uh, default settings is only I think 10 or 20 blog posts showing up in the so feed. basically yeah. yeah in the feed uh, so if you want to have more or like recycling and those types of things you have to set it up manually and uh, with that feed you can um, well, that, that's a really good thing because you can connect it to any other platforms out there and basically just schedule it and share it from your site. You don't have to go manually and share like the links and whatever. And that's, that's, what, that's what we the do with the, the Lift Your LMS blog. If somebody subscribes to our blog, I don't write, and they'll, they basically, we send them an email with the new yeah. blog post. Yeah. That's all handled automatically. Yeah. Through it. It's like an RSS type thing. So you're yeah. saying with Social Web Suite, you can say like on Tuesdays at five, check the RSS feed. And if there's something new, post it to Twitter yes. or this Facebook group. Post it to everywhere, yes. Which yes, is yes. super helpful from an efficiency standpoint. It is, it is, yeah. Basically, we go through from the newest to the oldest post on your uh, site and share it. And whenever something is like you just share, uh, you just post, publish the new post, then it's going to go immediately uh, upon uh, publishing it as well. So yeah, it's like pretty much similar to WordPress, right? And I think that's the strategy of um, if you want to like be everywhere and let's say you yes. know you're going to like manually go into Facebook and write a bunch of custom stuff, you can let that RSS thing just handle all some of your other outposts that you yes. don't check in regularly. So you can kind of be everywhere, but you know, you're not necessarily, I, you set it up once. And yes. Yes. And that's, that's the thing is like you, you have to try. And that's the thing that we talked about at the beginning for a different social network, right? You have to try all of them to see what actually fits you the best, your customers and your brand. And you, you don't really necessarily have time. Like nobody has time to like try them all. Right. Yeah. So, because as you said, we all wear like so many hats. 
so you, you cannot really do that. And then with us, you can actually try them all and then see um, what fits you the best. Where is your traffic really coming from? Uh, we have the Beatly analytics in, uh, with us and uh, that's why I suggest everybody to use Beatly integration because you can check it out like the link clicks as well as we have the UTM from Google Analytics. So the Google Analytics is our, well, it's my personal number one uh, choice of analytics actually. And I think everybody should uh, use it because <laughs> uh, like you have the, they are like the answers to like so many questions that you want to know. Yeah. And it's free. <laughs> so I, I don't know if you're not using it, you should, you should start immediately. <laughs> yeah. I think that's really important to make, especially when it comes to social media marketing and investments of your time, like to make data driven decisions. So your yes. team makes it easy to be like, okay, yeah. well, how much traffic did I really get from yes. that yes. social media thing? What you also have scheduling and a calendar tool. I was wondering if you could speak to like, doing social media well through time, like into the future on the calendar. Cause if you don't really have a plan for that, what I notice people do is like, let's say they publish a post or um, make a video. They'll just go everywhere and post it like within 15 seconds of each other. And then you see nothing from that person for like a month. Um, what do yeah. you, what do you recommend for calendaring or let's just say for a beginner, like, what are some just good rules of thumb of like spreading it around through time? Well, it just, it really depends how many posts you have, right? And how many messages. Yeah. Let's go with that. So uh, at least, at least you should have like, um, well, if you don't want to share it uh, every day, uh, there are a few times that you should do it. Uh, for example, it depends, like uh, different um, uh, analytics says different things. There were like a lot of uh, blog posts written about it uh, and research behind it. But mostly, uh, it. Uh, the other thing is also really important. That's why I said Google Analytics, because not everything works for everyone. Uh, it just really depends where are your customers in which time zone as well not necessarily in your time zone, right? Uh, so that's also really important thing to remember. Uh, most of the time, so basically on Facebook, people are engaged on, a, a more engaged on a Thursday, Friday, and over the weekend. That's what, what like a bunch of research shows. Uh, if you wanna do it once a weekly, Wednesday is the time, Wednesday is the day for all social networks. Don't ask me why. That's like a bunch of scientific, That's what scientific the data research. Said. I swear to God. Yeah, no. There is like, because I read a lot of scientific research behind it. And um, if you want to do it like once a week, like Wednesday is probably the way to go. If you want to do it like more than once a week. Uh, and for example, on Facebook, uh, a lot of people found out that, um, as I said, uh, Thursday, Friday and weekends are good to go. Uh, mostly, uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, have the highest engagement between 12 and 3 p.m. Or after maybe uh, on Facebook between 7 and 9 p.m. When people are at home relaxing. LinkedIn is a little bit different because it's for uh, business professionals, right? So LinkedIn is not over the weekends. Nobody's really checking LinkedIn over the weekends. So Monday to Friday is your best bet, right? Uh, so Monday to Friday, and usually it's uh, either a lunch break, like so 12 to 2, when people are on lunch and then they're checking Instagram, oh, um, uh, sorry, LinkedIn, or maybe around the, when they are traveling, like commuting to work or coming back from work. Those are the times when LinkedIn works the best. So uh, LinkedIn, you should post once a daily. You don't have to go uh, more than once because uh, that there is not that many content on LinkedIn still. So people can still see your post. Uh, Facebook pages as well, usually once or twice a day. A group also once or twice a day. It really depends how engaged your group is. But on Twitter, if you want to be more engaged, you should post at least four times a day, at least. 
That is some yeah. solid, solid tips. That's, <laughs> yeah, we're going to write a, a long blog post about it, as well as with our version two that it's coming soon. We will have that uh, recommendations for our users for the posting by best times, basically those recommended times by, re by research. And then if you want to do it, we can just set it up everything for you. If you don't, you can also change whatever works for you. But after this, what I also want to have that, like, please take this with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Try it for one week or two weeks and track your Google Analytics. Because you might find that these times are not really working for you. Well, we have some users that they are, and they told me that, uh, they are uh, most engaged people. They are mostly on Facebook. Like, for example, one user I have, uh, he is on Facebook. Like, that's his primary uh, social uh, network and he posted uh, he posts on his Facebook pages and groups and he found out that for example he is he's living in the uh, Pacific time zone and um, the the best time when users are engaged are like uh, 10 p.m. to like 2 a.m. which all the scientific research behind it says oh my goodness nobody's there ever <laughs> at that time so it just really 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 depends right about your customer where are your customers when are they and most engaged in those types of things so go with the scientific research for two weeks and then track with the google analytics and that's pretty much it that's where you will see the spikes and not spikes in um, in the shares that's awesome and yeah there I, in my experience one of the things i've found is sometimes the uh it, the, your audience is really local. Like they might be like yeah. U.S. and Canada if that's where you live, or you know Brazil if that's where mm -hmm. you live. But a lot of these online course and membership site folks, they have a global audience. So yeah. one of the things I do with our software is I know. I mean, we have a ton of customers across all kinds of different time zones. So I don't. I just try to make sure that I don't ignore the people. Yes. Like, and what's my night might be prime time for them, yes. or. Yes. Or whatever. So I just, it's an interesting challenge. It is. That's why I said, like, you have to keep in mind the time zones, right? Because, yeah. yeah, if you live in some small country and uh, your time zone is, like, completely different than, for example, all your customers are in the U.S., you have to abide by the, like, either Pacific or Eastern. That's pretty much it. There is no other way for you to gain more customers. But that's, and, there, that's, and then there's yeah. morning and evening people. I mean, there's people yes. that, like, go to bed, like, on yes. Facebook or social media. Yes. And there's other people who, like, they get up bright and early and they're heading to yes. the gym and they're doing their – That's the, the other thing that we are doing without version 2. Uh, yeah. what you should be posting in the morning and what you should be posting afternoon. There is like a different content. I mean, if, if you want to get better engagement, right? So basically in the morning, everybody is just waking up. So they are still full of energy and those types of things. And they're still want to learn. So you should post some like instructional stuff. Oh, interesting. In the middle of the day, you can also do that or, for example, promote your products and those types of things. But like at the end of the day, everybody is exhausted. And they so they just want to sit back and yes. entertain. Yeah. Yes. So videos. So internet, yes. Mm -hmm. Videos, entertaining stuff, you know, happy Thanksgiving and those like light stuff that works best, best the, uh, at the, in the evening. That's pretty much it. Like it's all sci psychology and science, right? <laughs> awesome. Well, go to socialwebsuite.com and check out what they've got. Check out the blog. I want to leave you, Tina. We've got about five more minutes okay. with a really hard question. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, wow, I'm in a hot seat. I don't like it. <laughs> so uh, in sales or marketing, there's this concept of AIDA where someone goes from awareness to interest to decision to action and buying your product. Mm -hmm. um, our, our friend Chris Lemma talks about the buyer's journey, which I believe he does from unaware, problem aware, solution aware, product aware. So these are like the different kind of phases people go through as they kind of warm up to the idea and then some of them potentially buy whatever your business offers. How should we market to people who are, how should we use social media marketing at like a couple of those different levels to someone who hasn't even heard of us versus somebody who's aware of us and we're trying to create content that they want to, might help them make a decision to buy or whatever. 
Well, that's the thing that I said when I said brand awareness, because at yeah. the beginning, right, nobody's heard of you. Like nobody knows, like your mom and dad knows you and that's pretty much it. Like few of your closest friends and that's it. Like nobody knows what you're doing, right? Yeah. So at the beginning, you should uh, uh, market to everybody. Yeah. And uh, especially, and the other thing is like what people doesn't like if you just promote your products all the time. Yeah, it's like a so billboard all the time. That, yeah. So the other like research out there is like maybe you put like content, your the other content or your valuable content, meaning like uh, trying to help people how to be better in uh, course creation. For example, for your users, it's like really good because they are all course, course creators. And then, for example, if you find another tool that helps them uh, in like, for example, video promotion or something like that, that will complement your tool. You can always share them. Oh, I found this cool tool. Like, you know, you, you can really create like useful videos really easy and free. Like this what podcast episode about social web suite. First. For example, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons we have this podcast is to help add value without it. Yes. You know, just and introduce people to tools that we respect and use ourselves. Yes. And I think that's, that's the best way to go, right? Because yeah. you are, uh, you're trying to help your audience, right? Uh, yeah. By promote, by actually offering them uh, solutions that you trust and value and use yourself. Yeah. Right. And uh, so that's the first thing. And basically those are the things that you should be sharing uh, 70 to 80% of the time only 20 to 30% of the time you should be sharing your stuff. Meaning your stuff, meaning, oh, we have a Black Friday sale, uh, check out our newest feature. Uh, the really important thing in, in uh, trying to get a brain, brand awareness is uh, you have to have like um, uh, at, uh, at least one blog post, at least 10 messages about each of your features. Because what we found out is that not everybody's going to use uh, the things that you think are most valuable. Some other people like might find some other feature more valuable than the other. And that's why, and not everybody knows, right? Everything that you have, even the people that are using, like even when we are talking, right? You don't, ha you don't know everything that we have, like all the features because you're not using it. You're not interested to like learn more because you are already overwhelmed and that's normal. But uh, uh, how would you find it if, I, if we didn't share it, right? Like you, like you wouldn't find it. So that's, that's the way to go as well. So try to share those types of things with people, not just like in uh, promotional. Not just by now, way. by now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not just in promotional sales way, yeah. but more explaining to people how uh, they will gain value by using that. That's, that's the way to go. Like the car salesman days are like long over, you know, people, there are so many tools out there nowadays and the buy now, buy now button. Yeah, it's okay. But not that many people are really buying from buy now, buy now people. Yeah. They want to, as we said at the beginning, they want to like you and trust you first. And then that's, they're, they're going to buy from you. That's pretty much it. But it is okay to sell on occasion. Like, but I agree you with you. I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, that's the whole point, right? My internal rule is like, uh, you know, it's like at a minimum three to one, uh, yeah. but more yeah. preferably like nine to one of like, yes. I'm just trying to create valuable, helpful content or yes. introductions. And, yes. But hey, we're having a Black Friday sale or whatever, yes. something, or we just, hey, we just launched a new product or a new feature. Yes. That yes. stuff does come out from time to time. You have to, you have yeah. to. Not, uh, that's not really a sales pitch as much as like it's valuable pitch to people who are already using your products. Who are interested. So they know, yeah. Yeah. you know, they know. Like for example, oh yeah, we just released these features. So if somebody's using your product, oh, this is cool. I should check it out, this out. You know, those, those types of things. So you should be, uh, that's the other thing like raising awareness, right? And like uh, letting people know what like what features you have that that's that's the most important thing because if you don't let them know and if you don't raise awareness about your brand and your product nobody will know about it right so you you should do that all the time and uh yeah and then you can uh bob also has a really good uh blog post about it how you should uh, do a bunch of stuff uh, regarding social how you should promote things and how you should like how can you uh like use your one blog post for like so many messages and so many other things like updating and making it into the course 
for example, making into video, uh, infographics. Infographics are big, right? Everybody is like visual, <laughs> so they like to see everything. So those types of things you can also do. And uh, yeah, if you are helpful and trustworthy, everybody's going to come. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tina, so much. Go find that article on Bob WP. Just Google Bob WP uh, social media. Um, what do they call that? Uh, repeating content? I or, think so, yeah. Or, or no, content repurposing. Something like that, yes. you'll find yes. it. Bob WP is also using Social Web Suite. You can find Tina's app, Social Web Suite, over at socialwebsuite.com. It can dramatically increase your ability to kind of automate some social media and schedule things out in the future. A uh, little pro tip, every time before I go on some kind of vacation or I, I use social web suite to get a bunch of stuff like going out while I'm gone so that my business can still be working while I'm away. Yeah. I also have a philosophy where I use social web suite to work for me on the weekend. Yeah. Uh, and it's not, <laughs> plenty of people check their Twitter, their Facebook, or their LinkedIn on the weekend um, so that you can be there if somebody's, you know, happen to see what's new while they're there, you know, Saturday morning, just hanging out, checking out what's on the phone. Yeah. So it's a really powerful tool. Tina, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Any, thank you so much. Any uh, final words for the people? Thank you so much for the kind words, Chris. And uh, we like Lifter as well. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm hoping your audience is already using Lifter LMS for like course creation, right? And if not, they're missing out a lot. Uh, so the final thing, well, uh, if anybody has any questions, you can always find me. We have a Drift, a live chat, and I'm the one replying. Uh, you can also find, like send me an email at tina at socialwebsv.com. That's my direct email address. Um, any of our pages, groups, we have, if you want to learn more about social media with WordPress, we have a group that we recently started uh, and we are not promoting there uh, anything. And actually the promoting is like forbidden. <laughs> so it's social media uh, marketing with WordPress and we are sharing their uh, knowledge about WordPress and social media. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Chris. And I'm looking forward to hanging out with you in Nashville at WordCamp US soon. Awesome. We'll, th we'll see you there. Thanks, Tina. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS Cast. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I hope you enjoyed the show. This show was brought to you by Lifter LMS, the number one tool for creating, selling, and protecting engaging online courses to help you get more revenue, freedom, and impact in your life. Head on over to lifterlms.com and get the best gear for your course creator journey. Let's build the most engaging results getting courses on the internet.